Hi, my name's Eva and welcome to this channel. Today I'm going to be talking about a common myth in the world of sexuality and how it relates to our conversations about sexual violence. So is sex addiction real? Well, I have three pieces of scientific evidence that point us in the direction that it's probably not. The first one, and kind of the biggest and most foundational one, is that sex addiction is not in the current or most recent edition of the DSM. Basically, it is a big old book that has been around for several decades, being worked on by the world's top psychologists as kind of the manual that clinical psychologists use to diagnose things like generalized anxiety disorder, major depressive disorder. So if it's not in there, clinical psychologists that have been trained and certified will not and do not diagnose you with that. So it's not in the book, which means that most scientists do not recognize it as a real condition. Along with that, my second point is that there are no evidence-based treatments for sex addiction. What this means is that when there is a new treatment or therapy or intervention that's being introduced into the world of psychologists and therapists, it goes through a pretty rigorous scientific testing process. You will measure people before and after the treatment or some other variation of that methodology to see whether their symptoms are actually improved. And then people will publish that in a paper in a scientific journal, a bunch of papers will publish similar things, and all of that together will provide pretty strong evidence that the treatment is effective. So there has been no papers published that show that treatment for sex addiction actually works. So. The therapists that are practicing treatment for sex addiction are doing so knowing that there is no scientific support for it. So kind of lead us to believe that sex addiction isn't a real thing. Number three, changes in the brain are not the same as in other addictions, like in alcohol or with other types of drugs. So that's part of the reason why sex addiction isn't in the Diagnostic Statistic Manual. Basically, these three points taken together show us that within the scientific community, or most of the scientific community, sex addiction is not viewed as legitimate. What I am not saying is that there are not symptoms and sexual issues that people struggle with. Those sexual issues definitely do exist. But the label of sex addiction, the framework of looking at it around addiction and all the treatment associated with treating something like an addiction, that is not validated by the scientific community. The other big thing I want to mention when talking about sex addiction is that labeling it as such can really increase the stigma around those behaviors and worsen people's feelings of shame and guilt about behaviors that are really a normal and healthy part of functioning. Now on to the second reason why I wanted to make this video, um, which is, is Harvey Weinstein or anybody else who's been accused of sexual violence, are they sex addicts? Specifically because Harvey Weinstein said that he's going to be going uh, to get treatment for a sex addiction. And if you come with me so far in this video, you know that no, sex addiction is not legitimate. All of that is bogus. But it's bogus on a whole other level in that it's conflating sex addiction or mental illness or mental struggles with violence. Um, and that's really not cool. For one, blaming violence on sex addiction takes accountability away from the person who has perpetrated said violence and puts it on a disorder that is away from them which is not a real thing. Sexual violence is about anger and power and control. It has nothing to do with mental illness or mental struggles. Not everybody who has a high sex drive or feels impulses, you might think of as sex addiction, perpetrates sexual violence. They're completely separate. And combining those two together or conflating them really does a disservice and further stigmatizes people. So, moral of the story, sex addiction is not validated by the scientific community. People who are accused or perpetrate sexual violence, it is about power and anger and we should not be conflating them. That is all for me today. 
Like this video if you like it. Share if you want to debunk this idea of sex addiction and how we mix it up with sexual violence. Please, please do share. Subscribe if you aren't already. Support me on Patreon and have a lovely day. Also, I have linked a bunch of really awesome researchers and psychologists and experts in sex addiction or the lack thereof in the description. I am not an expert and I've put all of my references below, so please, please check it out to learn more.